Hello and welcome to MensNet. My name is Tony Nazaro, executive producer of MensNet and your host for tonight's program. Tonight we will depart from our usual format to give commentary on a very sensitive but important issue. Jessica Lynch and the continuing folly of women in combat. Her personal ordeal should be acknowledged, but the disingenuous discussion of women in a combat zone can no longer be ignored. Remember, the truth is more important than what's popular, and societal welfare more important than an individual's choice. Women have come a long way over the years, and in most areas justifiably so. But the military shouldn't be a place for a social experiment, nor a combat zone the place to force change in American sex roles. Jessica's lucky rescue. A soldier called her name, and without answering, she peeked out from under the sheets where she was hiding. Quote, Jessica Lynch, we're United States soldiers, and we're here to protect you and take you home. She replied, quote, I'm an American soldier, too. The response to her should have been, no, you're not. You're a young American girl lost on her quest for mythical equality. Later on, the fragile teenager's reported statement to a doctor, quote, please don't let anyone leave me behind, sounded like a far cry from her recruiter, Sergeant Grady's promise that she'd see the world. Jessica's father, like many men today, have been so intimidated by political correctness and its identical roles for women rhetoric that he almost senselessly lost his daughter. In more sane times, he would have been able to convince her that she just wasn't a female facsimile of a man and that the physical, emotional, psychological, and sexual orientation differences do matter in a combat zone. Our society is foolishly ignoring the reality of men's and women's different physiology and its practical purpose for both our personal and societal well-being. Most people have been deceived by feminism's equality popularization to the point of being in bio-denial. Training women for combat when there are enough able-bodied men makes about as much sense as preparing men for childbirth. As far as women like Jessica volunteering to serve in the military and combat zones for patriotic reasons, they would serve our country better if they were assigned more traditional female duties, letting the more physically and emotionally suited male soldiers do their job. You don't help your team when you're a substandard player who insists on being included. Putting it even more bluntly, an Afghani POW held in Guantanamo Bay said to an American female soldier who was guarding him, quote, you wouldn't act so brave if you were on my side of the fence. This World War I poster was from a more pragmatic time when women supported and not hindered the war effort. The physical disparity. The difference in average physical ability between men and women is easy to prove to any rational person. The armed services actually have different standards on their physical fitness tests. The U.S. Army fitness standards being 80 push-ups for men versus 56 for women, 87 sit-ups for men versus 85 for women, and 12 and a half minutes for a 12-mile run for men versus 15 and a half minutes for women. Male Marines have to do a minimum of 40 sit-ups versus 22 for women, three pull-ups for men, no pull-up requirement for women, and men must run a three-mile course, one and a half miles for women. Notice that there's the traditional push-up has been eliminated from Marine fitness tests altogether. The Marine Corps explains this away by stating, quote, fitness tests for women are not as difficult as those for men because of biological differences. The current female recruit, treatment, training, and testing 
has been created using a less difficult standard called gender norming. Today, the Marines maintain segregated but supposedly equal training for men and women. They insist that women Marines become as combat capable as men. If this was true, why do they need to train separately in the first place? Even former Congresswoman Pat Schroeder, a major proponent for women in combat, condemned the separate training of the Marines, stating, quote, separate is inherently unequal. Remember, in war, there is no women-only competition. If the fighting becomes hand-to-hand -hand combat, we can't ask the enemy to pair off the women like they do in the U.S. Army and Marine training camps. While some women can regularly pass the tests and training, even in 2003, men still grow bigger, stronger, and faster on average than women, as evidenced by the separate protected categories we have for women in all sports and athletic competition. Let's not be fooled by the technological advantages that our military has over other armies, which might allow women to fight effectively. To complete most wars successfully, you need, quote, a few good men, which used to be the Marine motto as on-the-ground combat soldiers to actually occupy enemy territory. That is why we lost the Vietnam War. We, were never, we never sent troops into North Vietnam. We tried to win the war from the air with our technology, and it didn't work. Naturally, more emotional. The average woman would have a hard time dealing with the horrors of ground combat as proven by the recent study that after the Twin Towers attack, many more women sought therapy for emotional problems than did men. Additionally, the arts and entertainment special exposed many female recruits getting emotional merely because they had completed their training. Crying Marines who haven't even witnessed the horror and sadness of war are a huge insult to Marine history. Accordingly, women soldiers in an active combat zone would be only tolerated and never fully relied upon by the male soldiers. Even if the first reports about Jessica Lynch's heroism were true, she only would have done what many men have done before in that situation. But it's just like that old saying, when a dog walks on its hind legs, you're so amazed it's doing it, you don't notice how poorly it actually is doing it. Cultural misdirection. This could be subtitled, be careful what you wish for, you just might get it. Women like Jessica are setting a very dangerous precedent. They are not acting in the best interests of most women by portraying a superficially tough appearance. They're making it harder for women who aren't or don't wish to be considered that way. Most Americans consider women the gentler caregivers and nurturers of a society. Now that some women want to be seen capable of coldly killing on command, what will women's image become when they're not considered unique anymore? The bearers of life should not become the takers of life, lest we all lose our maternal moorings. Damsel in distress. Because Jessica was a blue-eyed, blonde-haired, pretty young girl, her rescue was easier to sell to those in charge considering good public relations. Conversely, if it was only a male POW, they wouldn't have made such a quick and risky effort. After all, the last time they took such a chance to rescue soldiers held by the enemy was the rescue of 514 male POWs in World War II. You could then deduce that one Jessica Lynch is worth 514 male POWs. Jessica naively put herself in peril and then reportedly said, quote, maybe this minute the American army will come and get me. Why wouldn't she expect to be rescued? Don't women rely on their husbands, brothers, and sons to help them in time of trouble? 
Don't women victims expect policemen or firemen to save them? Let's be honest, most of the time when a woman is in desperate need of physical help or a soldier needs military leadership, they both would have more confidence in masculinity than in mammary glands. Male blood, female glory. Because of our politically correct atmosphere, sometimes women receive more praise than they really deserve. Take the case of the Vietnam Women's Memorial. 58,167 U.S. men died in Vietnam versus only eight women. Nevertheless, they built a separate memorial commemorating the women even though their names were, were already on the Vietnam Memorial Wall. They didn't build a separate memorial for African, Asian, or Irish American soldiers who died. Yet there weren't any complaints from those groups about not being sufficiently recognized. Remember all the fuss made over Captain Linda Bray leading troops and capturing a dog kennel in the Panama invasion. As it turned out, the reported battle was mostly untrue. Although there were shots fired, no enemy soldiers were killed, wounded, or captured. The sad story of Lieutenant Kara Holtgreen, who was given priority over male aviators in the naval training program, only to have her crash and die while incorrectly trying to land her fighter jet on the aircraft carrier USS Abraham Lincoln. And, although it was an unconfirmed story, the Washington Post still headlined Jessica Lynch's heroic tale, quote, she was fighting to the death. The story of her fighting to the death, which origi originated from an anonymous source, has still not been totally disclosed by the military at this time. She was injured when her truck overturned, but a doctor who treated her said she was not shot or stabbed. The Rape Issue Susan Brownmiller, who wrote the feminist staple, against our will, men, women, and rape, said that, quote, women being raped in war was proof that all men consider rape a form of manhood, achievement, or conquest. Wrong, Susan. Women get raped in war for two basic reasons. The sexual, personal satisfaction of men, bearing no consequences, and the political humiliation of the defeated country's people. Ultimately, it's mostly men who die and mostly women who get raped in a war zone. In Jessica Lynch's case, she should have a mandatory rape test performed by American doctors because it was common practice for women to be raped in Iraq for punitive reasons. How likely is it that Jessica, playing combat soldier, was spared being gang raped by angry, ravaged Iraqi soldiers after nine days in captivity. Maybe this is the reason there's so much secrecy about her capture and condition. Additionally, the results of her rape test should be published because other women considering joining the military have a right to know exactly what risks would be expected of them. Women don't normally take sexual advantage of confined men because as stated by Eleanor McCoby and Carol Jacklin in their book The Psychology of Sex Differences, man's greater sexual aggressiveness is one of the best established and most pervasive of all psychological sex differences. Legal Aspects I charge the United States military with violence.